Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself and Marta, where as always I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Now I just want to say I am a little bit hoarse today so I do apologise for that. I uh, went to see Prodigy last night in London, they were awesome, but uh, feeling it a little bit today so do forgive me for that. Anyway, we're going to kick things off today with some pieces from Intel and the first of which is reports regarding what they may have planned for this holiday. So what we have here is a very interesting report from Digitimes which, if true, could actually mean we might might be seeing a price increase for desktop processors from Intel in the fourth quarter of 2018 as allegedly they have cut their supply of these desktop processors in favour of things for OEMs like say for example server processors and capacities for notebook processors that sort of thing. So essentially means you know fan favourites to put in your rig like 8700k or the 9600k which of course has just come out and even the older ones like the 8400 and so on and so forth, we could see supply for these be rather short or, or possibly and, which is I would say fairly likely, we will see a hefty markup on the ones that are available due to the fact that the supply for them apparently, according to this report, is going to be short. So essentially what Intel are doing, again according to the sources of Digitimes, is increase the process of volumes by pumping in roughly one billion dollars and Intel are expanding various sites as well so at least according to what we know here, Intel are focusing more on notebooks and pre-built PC manufacturers and obviously again the OEM, the server side as well and unfortunately something has to kind of be cut if they're going to be increasing their investment in other areas like this and at least according to this report that is going to be the DIY channel which of course is just your, your standard oh I'm just going to buy the processor by itself stick it in your motherboard and so on and so forth so unfortunately this could mean that again especially for the 9900k and the ninth generation ones that just came out they're already a little bit expensive as it is when the supply becomes short we could definitely see some pretty staggering price increases for those so obviously this does leave AMD in pretty much the perfect position to kind of swoop in and be like, hey, guess what? Processors aren't really expensive. Guess what? Processors are probably going to get a price cut, that sort of thing. So, yeah, AMD definitely have a bit of an opportunity here, again, if this report is accurate. So, there will be a link in the description below this video, of course, to the Digitimes report. Go give that a read if you're at all curious, but I've pretty much given you all of the important information, of course. But... I always like to give you the source when appropriate. Anyway, that's not the only thing we have from Intel today, as we have some interesting comments from the Intel VP regarding adaptive VSync. So what we actually have here is a tweet from the Intel Graphics Twitter account. Now you may recall that rumours have been floating around for some time, and Intel themselves have hinted that they are going to be supporting adaptive sync. Of course, there's comments back in August from Chris Hook, of course, used to be of AMD, who confirmed, yep, they're still working on implementing it, but now we have comments from Lisa Pierce, the VP at Intel, who said, yes, we are supporting adaptive vSync, and again, this was posted on the official Intel Graphics Twitter account, with a very short clip of her basically just verbally confirming this. And she said, quote, our priority is going to be enabling the standard interfaces that are out there now. And she also said that the, quote, widest impact, widest install base we can have will be the focus right now, which is the Visa or VESA adaptive sync standard, which you probably know more under its other name, which is FreeSync. So obviously, that's the technology that AMD uses. They have the brand name of FreeSync, but obviously that is the VS, that's V E S A. Uh, adaptive sync standard so this makes perfect sense from Intel you know they don't want to use a proprietary technology they want to use the tech that's going to have the biggest sort of applicable user base as possible you know as I was discussing the other day they are not messing around when it comes to graphics they are really obviously aware that AMD and Intel have head start on them and obviously making use of this sort of technology is a way to kind of you know make use of it in that way so what am, what do i mean by that well instead of having to make a technology by themselves or use a proprietary technology might as well use the one that's going to benefit them the most anyway so we're going to move on to some less positive news next 
So what do I mean by that? Well, unfortunately, researchers at the University of California at Riverside have found that GPUs are vulnerable to side channel attacks, which of course have been plaguing both Intel and AMD CPUs under various names, but of course they are probably most best known but under the names Meltdown and Spectre. So basically, we had two professors and two students who reverse engineered a NVIDIA GPU to demonstrate three attacks on graphics and computational stacks, as well as across them. And at least according to what they have found and what they believe, these are the first reported, again, reported side channel attacks on graphics cards. So again, they did do three attacks on the GPU. So what do we actually have? Well... The good news is, um, well, it's not really good news, but I guess sort of is the best way to phrase it. Anyway, the point is, all three of these attacks do require you to download a malicious program like malware or something to basically spy on your computer. This is not going to be something that you can do otherwise, at least according to what I understand. However, the first attack will track your user activity on the web. That's obviously, you know, GPU is used a lot to render graphics on your browser. And then a malicious app uses OpenGL to create a spy program to infer the behavior of the browser. So basically, they can look at your history, look at what you um, look at what you browse, probably capture some sensitive information, including login credentials, all that sort of thing. And the second attack, they did manage to extract user passwords because, again, the GPU is used to render that login and password box. So if you're logging into your PayPal or doing internet banking when having been exposed to this attack, well, then I've got bad news for you, my friend. The third one is more for data center. It targets computational applications and uses memory sniffing to grab passwords, but this time, again, on a neural network, which want to enable it to learn the network structure. So essentially, this particular piece of code could get your network, neural network algorithms and of course take them for itself. Now, happily, they did obviously report their findings to NVIDIA and obviously they have said they are going to be publishing a patch that will offer admins the ability option to disable access to performance counters from user level processes and of course they have shared their findings as well with Intel and AMD because while they did test these on Nvidia GPUs there is no reason to believe that AMD GPUs will be vulnerable as well. So yeah not brilliant but at least this is something that you have to have downloaded a piece of malicious um or a malicious program, should I say, for, but still not great that this annoying side channel exploit, which we'll have, you know, no end to, it seems, is also going to be hitting the graphics side, or potentially hitting the graphics side, but now that these researchers have found it, and let uh, all the people know, perhaps we won't ever actually see it affect any real world users, we'll have to wait and see. So our next item for today is actually regarding the Samsung Galaxy S10. Now what we have here is some comments from Roland Quant, or Quant, I'm actually not sure on the pronunciation there, so do forgive me, but according to him at least, we are going to be seeing two variants of the Samsung Galaxy S10. One is going to be using Qualcomm's X50 modem, which is going to be 5G capable, and there's also that's also going to be using the Exynos 9820 as well, but we're going to see a second variant of the S10 which makes use of the Snapdragon 8150, and it's unclear at the moment as to whether or not these particular ones are going to be using 5G or not. So, at least according to Roland, only some S10s are actually going to support the 5G technology. And you might wonder why this is. Unfortunately, uh, Roland didn't really have a whole lot to say, but it's probably just due to the die size because the X50 is 10nm and the Snapdragon 8150 is 7nm. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. But again, this is just a report. Obviously, it's not outside the you know the realms of possibility for there to be like a S10 Pro or Plus or whatever they end up calling it. There often is like a, a higher tier version of these sorts of things. But obviously to have such a difference, you know, 5G versus not 5G, obviously 5G is going to take a while to be kind of a common parlance as it were, but it still could be a rather 
dividing thing, I guess you could say, if this is indeed true. But again, we don't know. This is just a report. But it's something to tuck under your hat for sure, and obviously something to pay attention for when Samsung officially reveal what is actually going on in terms of the specs of the Samsung Galaxy S10. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.